tax season. We got that fucking bitch ass motherfucker over there hiding 87 Ebro still got my name in his mouth. You know what? I'm gonna explain this story today on tax season just so I could get out there. Um, me and Ebro, whatever, had our little issues, right? The the bozo nigga emailed places that I worked at trying to get me fired and suspended, whatever. It is what it is. I disrespected his wife. That's what I do sometimes when people play with me. What I do is I attack somebody you love to see if you really going to be a man and protect who you love. Because sometimes people just throw words out there and then just, just to say anything. So what you do is you put them in a the position to have to be a man. So that's what I do. So I put them in a position to have to be a man and then you prove that he was a, he was a beach chair you know what i mean so so i left it as that i was like fuck the corny nigga so i start talking about the shit recently so i wake up this morning and people's like yo ebro is tweeting about you oh ebro's talking about you on his show he's talking about you he's calling you a liar he said that you called him and he told you suck his dick let me explain this story man this is what's wrong with a lot of you niggas you should never believe no shit like that like you know, I'm a very respectful man, but soon as you play with my respect, I'm going to disrespect to the utmost because I realize that a lot of niggas only respect disrespect. And that's what I do. And I want to disrespect Ebro for the rest of his life until like he's like gone out of the scene. I don't want him here in New York anymore. He's ruined New York City, New York City's music scene. He's blamed it on a lot of other people. Ebro's from the Bay and they put him um, as program director in New York City at one of the hottest radio stations that was out here. And that's why it was because of him so you know i i get mad because you know combat jack hit me one day and he was like yo tax man maybe we should just you know squash all this shit you know it's getting a little out of hand whatever i spoke to um rosenberg and we're gonna do a panel in a3c and we really want you a part of it so i was like yo whatever man i'm down i'll do it and he's like yo man this is good yo man da, 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 whatever so he gets us on the line with rosenberg Rosenberg speaks. I apologize to Rosenberg because I came a Rosenberg wife too. Cause I be wanting these niggas to be all they could be in the army. Don't act like you ready for war and you're not going to be all you could be in the army. So I come at a nigga family like, yeah, let me come at your mother and see how you feel. You ain't going to protect your mammy. You ain't going to protect nobody. You probably don't wear boxes. You probably wear panties. So I put niggas in the position to be all they could be, to be, to, and they ain't want to be all they could be. So I'll be like, you know what? I apologize to y'all wives because that was uncalled for, and sometimes I do jump out the window. So he's like, yo, man, I really want to do this panel, but, you know, it would really be awkward if I'm doing a panel with my boss's enemy. You know, this is my colleague, and da 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 this is a friend of mine, and I would feel funny doing, you know, if we could just, you know, if you could speak to Ebro and would y'all just get it out the way so we could just do this panel and get it done. And, you know, I was reluctant about doing that because I, re I really wasn't sorry. You know what I mean? So it was like I felt like I was lying. But, you know, Combat Jack gave me a real long speech. You know what I mean? And, you know, what motherfuckers with degrees give you a speech. They could get you sometimes. You know what I mean? So I agree with Combat. I was like, all right, man, you know what, man? Um, I apologize to the nigga wife or whatever, you know what I mean? So I hit Ebro up and I'm like, yo, um, I'm like, yo, um, yo, I apologize or whatever, everything with your wife. This nigga just says, suck my dick. <laughs> like, but the way, he, uh, you, th th so I knew it was like a setup, you know what I mean? I'm like, these niggas are so corny, you know what I mean? Cause I'm like, you know. And I understand he probably was mad. That was him dealing with his, you know, because a lot of people deal with this pride thing. I keep telling you, man, pride can end your ride. And it's a thin line, that you know, to committing suicide. You understand what I'm saying? And it happens to so many niggas because they deal with this pride thing where they like, I have to just, I have to do this. Listen, man, sometimes, man. It don't matter, man. You cannot beat the fly. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes it don't matter how big you think you are. You just got to swallow your pride and be like, I don't want it. I'm going to leave this alone. And that's the position that I put niggas in. And that's why I continuously disrespect them because I know we're going to be in the same places and nothing is going to happen. And guess what? I don't have to do anything to anybody because I put you in a position to where you have to do something to somebody. I want to disrespect you to the point to where if you don't punch me in my face, you going to look soft. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have to do anything to anybody. So the day you do here, I wash one of these niggas is because they tried to flex. You know what I mean? And then I, and I love the flex. You know what I mean? We all, we all for that. You know what I mean? So 
I just wanted to let that be known. This dude keeps saying, like, I'm a liar, and I called him to apologize like somebody was scared of him. Wasn't nobody scared of you. Nobody's scared of you. I'm telling you, suck my dick today, and I'm not sorry. So what are you going to do today? You know what I mean? If I called you today right now and I said I'm sorry, and you said I call you tomorrow morning and say suck my dick again, you understand what I'm saying? I, you still a pussy one. You still pussy. You pussy. You out here letting dudes play with your wife, and you ain't doing nothing but sending emails, motherfucker. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of hip-hop. Get the fuck out of here. Go work for Grey's Anatomy or some shit. You need to do something else in your life. This is not your fucking profession. You don't know music. You slandered every fucking single record that I bought to the fucking table in New York City in the last two years, and all of them worked, and then you had the dick ride in the end. Man, you ain't nothing but a motherfucking six-foot-five equestrian, beloved. You got to understand something, man. Dick riding is the worst fucking form of transportation, my nigga. It's not going to get you nowhere. And that's why right now your ride is fucking ending. You're going flat and you don't got no motherfucking run flats, my nigga. You on a fucking bumpy road, my nigga. It's over for you, my nigga. Niggas don't give a fuck about you. Your word don't mean nothing. Do you remember when you was the nigga in the city? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, but it's over. You understand what I'm saying? Um. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you got to get to that retirement age. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know what I mean, an AI might arrive when Jordan is on the court. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes Kobe might arrive. What you got to understand is you was never great. You was nothing, my nigga. You was always Harumana. You was nobody special to begin with. You was just a fucking fluke. You was a bozo that they fucking put in a position, and all you did was bozo shit and tried to blame it on everybody else. You a fucking bozo, and you got demoted. You was program director. Now you just a motherfucking employee. You need to sit your fucking monkey ass down to keep my fucking name out your mouth always oh, trying to slander podcast niggas love my podcast more than your fucking station you bitch ass nigga use a motherfucking hoe keep my name out your mouth and fuck all y'all niggas up there matter of fact you know what i mean I i'm cool with a couple niggas up there you know i ain't talking about y'all whoever i'm cool with but whoever else fuck y'all too if you got my name in your mouth and fuck your family too how about that? Come outside with your cousins. You see me jump me. Don't talk about how I'm pussy and always talking. Talk about how you ain't doing nothing to the nigga that's always talking. Talk about that. You got some dumbass like Troy Ave talking about he knew pop. The new pop, right? You know what I'm saying? Um... The individuals that was involved in the Urban Plaza thing, people trying to act like they real and they... Fam, you not real if you take a gun into a club and your boy's not going to hold you. You don't even got no boys to hold you down. Somebody came in the club to slap you up and you pull out a pistol in the club? That don't make you real. That make you a sucker. But you can't hold your own? You can't even hold your own long enough to get out the club? That's my specialty. I work out just for that. All I need is one, two, bang. I'm going. Two, two. <laughs> out of here, baby. All day. Nah, you know what I mean? But that just shows that you ain't got people around you. You know what I'm saying? To uh, to make sure that when it's time to shoot that fair one or somebody trying to smack you up, you, all you need is one or two homies. In. But you're saying so basically the stories get sensationalized. Yes. And Troy Ave's situation gets sensationalized. And Tupac's life situation. Well, that drama particular, that particular, has been sensationalized. Yes. To like, well, it got sensationalized in the moment, which is what created the East West beef. Right. right. Because Pac was rightfully upset at thinking that he was set up. Right. By people he thought was cool with him. Right. So now Flex having. And he was around. mad at the wrong people. It was people that was cool with him.